Hello, everyone. This is Brett the Comic Novice. I am Brett, and I am a comic novice. I have been reading comics for just about a year, and I am taking my novice perspective in the comic book world and trying to see what is good, what is bad, what is, uh, well, kind of in between. Uh, so I am not bogged down by canon continuity and other issues that other readers may have. So I'm just going to be coming from from a very, again, novice perspective. Please stay tuned for some of my weekly videos where I do review the weekly comic books uh, that do come out, as well as my the one that I'm really looking forward to is my New 52 Experiment. Because I've heard, being a novice into comics, people have strong beliefs, uh, thoughts revolving around the New 52, I am going to take my less than stellar, less than gigantic, you know, size of a piece of dust uh, knowledge of the you know, comic books in general, and apply them to the New 52 and find out what was well, what succeeded, what did not. I'm going to be review reading them in the order uh, that Comicron listed their sales figures. And I've already gone through one month and a half. I have not shot that video. I just need to get that out of the way. But that being said, whew, uh, some great stuff, some uh, less than great stuff. But I personally, I'm very optimistic about this. I'm excited to find out more about the New 52, What's make what makes it bad, what makes it good. And does my opinion mirror those of those who possibly have been reading comic books for years? So with that, I am going to go over the comic books for September 2020, or September 23rd, 2020. Most all of, or actually all of the comic books that I will be reviewing are DC because those are the main ones that are on my poll list. All the other ones I have not yet received. So the first one is the Flash 762. The I'm not going to go full into the Flash 762 because this is the final uh, issue by, by uh, the writer um, Joshua Williamson. He has been on this title for over 100 issues. This is his final, um, you know, the Flash's final battle. I love the cover art. The Flash dragging the unconscious or dead body of the reverse Flash, Eobard Thawne. And the, uh, the art is just beautiful. I absolutely love it. I was enthralled by this. I was excited to find the final solution. Personally, and again, I have not started reading the stuff from all the way back in uh, the, the Rebirth era, but I felt as though... I was a little in the dark, and that's not Joshua Williamson's fault. It is my novice perspective, but I will say I have enjoyed this. I picked this run up in issue 75, which is a horrible issue. I even, and then I picked up issue 70 through 75, and that uh, year one uh, storyline was just awful. I think that many people who do follow and like The Flash would agree with that, that the year one issue was horrible. But again, besides like the fighting between Eobard Thawne and Barry, you know, duking him out and essentially winning at the very end, this is more of a celebration of Joshua Williamson's writing on The Flash since 2016. And yes, I strongly recommend it, but I do think that this is something that does need to have some prior background knowledge into. Keeping up on with Joshua Williamson, this is one of the tie-ins. That, that There's been two tie-ins for the month of September. There will be a third one on the 30th. This is Speed Metal, again, written by Joshua Williamson. This picks up and follows Wally West, who has Dr. Manhattan powers, which I know some people like and some people don't like. I have read, and I thought it was a great series. I have read Flash Forward. It was great. I loved it. It was a great adventure. And I wasn't keen on picking up tie-ins because I have read all of the first Dark Knight's Metal, and I felt as though there was a lot of tie-ins that uh, were just awful. And I read them for cheap because I read them this year and picked them up on a good deal on Comixology. 
This, however, is a great story, even though it's a tie-in. I feel as though, personally, if you didn't listen to the, or catch up on this or read this, and you're just waiting for Dark Knight's Death Metal issue four, I believe that this will be explained in like a couple panels and you'll be caught up. So even though I feel as though it is important, personally, I think you could skip it if you'd like to, but why? It's it's the Flash family. It's it's great. It's Wally West. I, I've grown to love Wally West. I have read every single night for a couple, about two months the Jeff Johns run on The Flash, and Wally West is a magnificent Flash. I feel as though I, uh, there could be room for a Flash and Barry Allen book, pro- perhaps in the future, you know, co- you know, coexisting at the same time. So I recommend this, but it is something that you probably don't need to worry about if you are not into the tie-ins. Something that I do strongly recommend... Suicide Squad. I have not read a se- or seen the movie. I did little, know little to none, nothing about the Suicide Squad. Yet this book is so great. Tom Taylor writing this. It, it, he admitted in issue one that characters that you might know or might be familiar with will die. Nobody is safe, and he said nobody. I doubt that they'd kill Harley Quinn. But he did tease a little bit later that he was going to go kill Deadshot. And people didn't take him seriously. This is a fun story. You get, uh, the, throughout the stories, uh, throughout the issues, you have some uh, fun laugh-out-loud moments, even some horrific s- s- scenes, but it's still laugh-out-loud. I, I love it. The daughter, the chemistry between... Deadshot and his daughter, who he just barely met, who also is really good at shooting um, things, is great. And then you have some twist endings, only to find that Superman has saved the day. However, because the title does say and does insinuate Deadshot will die, and Tom Taylor said Deadshot will die, we will find out that, well... Last page of the issue. Deadshot, bleeding from the head, falling out of a window. Doesn't look good for Deadshot. If you are not reading Suicide Squad, this has been one of the funnest books I have read in DC. One that I continue to wonder if I should still support, Batman Superman. I picked this up during the... Uh, infected storyline where it was, uh, you know, the Batman who laughs, King Shazam, and all those people fighting Batman and Superman. The next, it just seems like just an adventure between Batman and Superman, which is nice, but it just doesn't seem like, and again, I'm new to continuity, but I mean, right now, they're fighting. They're done fighting King Shazam. Shouldn't they be in Death Metal? Shouldn't this book be paused? Shouldn't this book book be part of Death Metal? I'm confused by this book. We have a team-up between uh, Batwoman and Steel. that are, They are going to try to find out what happened to Batman and Superman because they are on the dark side of the moon, taken there by Brainiac. I'm curious if I'm going to keep this subscribing to this book, just because it's been less than lackluster since the Infection series. Um, I, If you like Batman, Superman, it might be for you. I do like Batman. I do like Superman. I don't know if it's for me. Shazam, final issue. I have not read any of the Jeff John stuff. I was looking forward to just sitting down and just plowing through them. This is written by, I believe his name is Jeff Loveness. He did another story where Shazam goes and uh, tries to help out in Gotham, and it is quite funny. I, I love the voice of Billy Batson. I love this. You have Shazam fighting a robot in Japan, and he literally punches the head of this robot off 
saves everybody from being crushed by the robot that he just punched the head off of, and then thinks about possibly dropping it off in the water, even though know, maybe it might make uh, Aquaman mad. Then he has realizes that he is a teenage kid and he is late for class, so he gets back, finds out that uh, his sub he has a substitute teacher. Substitute teacher, I'm going to guess uh, Billy might have a crush on her, but uh, she kind of gives him some lip for not being prepared. He just says, hey, haven't you seen the cool thing that Shazam's been doing lately? And uh, she says, no, I think you need to be a little bit more respectful, work hard, because punching heads off of things might be one thing, but you know what? You need to be prepared for the rest of your life. So... Billy doesn't think so. He decides to go help out. He helps uh, Arthur. Arthur gives him some grief because he says that that somebody had dropped off a gigantic robot head in the sea. Again, super funny. I wish this was continuing on. I have not read any Jeff John stuff, but so far, Loveness's writing so far has been so fun. It's not been serious. It's just been a fun adventure. And then we find that Shazam is saving his substitute teacher. She, he finds out that she's a little bit more distraught. He has dinner with her. And when he becomes Billy Batson, he decides to give her a break. However, because he's a teenager, does she really believe that he's there to help? Probably not. Great story. I love the message. It was so fun. Aquaman. So I did a YouTube channel of Kelly Studeconic's um, Year of the Villain Aquaman line, which was just, to me, dreadful. The follow-up storyline has also been dreadful. I have heard that uh, Kelly Studeconic is going to be off of Aquaman, which will be great. This is a two-part story taken uh, by some Clark guy, who he is just exploring um, Jackson, who is Manta's son uh, storyline a little bit further. It's more or less of a tie-in to the main Aquaman storyline. Again, it's just kind of getting Jackson more out there, get letting you know that he's gay. We have a way to go. Here's kissy action right there. And then some fa- son-mother thing with Jackson. Perhaps, and this perhaps might be setting some other things up because I'm not sure who is taking over for Kelly Sudaconic in January. Maybe it is this Clark guy because we do have some setup between Jackson and Manta, and also the uh, something's going on with um, something's going on with the trench people. Because perhaps something was stolen, and that and Jackson saved the day, prevented them from stealing it, and perhaps that will lead to further uh, turmoil under the sea. Ah. Uh, Batgirl. Now, can I tell you, issue 47, is it 47, 46? I think it was 47. Issue 47 was a revisit of the Joker to Barbara Gordon and the Joker kind of terrorizing Barbara Gordon and reminding her and sending chills throughout her spine for what she, you know, what he had done to her previously. And that was great. That was amazing. I was riveted by it. And then the next story, which is issue 48, was a a filler story where her brother and uh, Commissioner Gordon, who's now a defunct Commissioner Gordon because he turned evil during the whole Year of the Villain storyline, and you have a whole bunch of Batgirls being murdered, or redheaded light girls 
being dressed up as Batgirl only to be murdered and left in the city. You have Barbara Gordon talking to her brother, who I didn't know was a creep. Uh, apparently, he is a massive creep. And her dad, you know, he's she still has issues with her dad because her dad was evil. However, she's, you know, she's... A, you know, a big girl and she can take care of herself, even though she was attacked by the Joker. And the, and her brother does know that she is Batgirl. Commissioner Gordon does not. Every so often in one of the issues, you felt as though she he possibly did. However, here is, and if you don't want the spoiler, here's the spoiler. Essentially, the person behind killing all these people is her brother. And her brother basically starts turning into Two-Face or is basically multi-personality because as Barbara Gordon is talking to him, we suddenly get these word bubbles where, what, what are you talking about? Where's the redhead? Killer. Surprise. Where? What? No, 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 no. I've been killing them for you. So we find out that uh, James Gordon, the commissioner's son, Barbara's brother, is bipolar or schizophrenic or something or is slowly turning into a, a two-face that does not have two faces, just a metaphorical two-face. And he is evil. He's been the one killing all these uh, red-headed girls. And he decides that he's going to stop it. And he jumps off and kills himself. And, of course, Commissioner Gordon feel, believes it is Batgirl who is the one that killed his son, who he was only berating and hating and wishing he was dead earlier. And now he is going to probably get revenge on Batgirl for killing his son, who was an evil, evil person. And the last one. Action Comics. 1025. Um, <laughs> all right. I always wondered, could an artist affect the story? And I always thought, no, there's the, the story will be strong regarding how, regardless of how bad the art is. And then over the past six or so issues, John Romita Jr., has taken over as artist for Superman Action Comics. Now, let me tell you, um, the artist can make a good story horrible. And I know a lot of people's feelings about Brian Michael Bendis and his word bubbles and, and his exposition and whatnot. And some people believe that he hates Clark Kent and whatever. Let's just look at this because this is to me, two-thirds of a good story, but is a train wreck when it comes to the art. You have long or a little while ago, you have this action scene, which upon I had I didn't know who any of these people were. I listened to a review and I found out that this is not Superman. If you look really carefully, this is a U, and this is Ultraman. I have not met Ultraman before. However, I'm very excited to read some of the um, Injustice League in the New 52. I have them all bought. I'm excited to read them. But we have Ultraman right here. I have no idea who this is right there, smashing this car. I don't know who that is. And that looks like the Green Lantern. This just seems weird. And now I finally get it that this is not the pro Earth One. This is a different Earth. So, and look, this Snickers commercial has better art than the actual storyline. Snickers commercial to get you to buy Snickers, actual main art for the story to get people to want to buy it. Snickers. Look at this, look at the pictures and buy it. Um, 
I need think I think DC needs to find the Snickers artist and um dump John Romita Jr. and and Brian Michael Bendis penciler Snickers artist. That's what it should be. Cause this is much better. In fact, as I was reading this the first time, I flipped the page and I was like, oh my gosh. And I started reading it. I know I've seen this Snickers thing, and maybe you've seen it as I'm flipping through, but I've seen this Snickers ad constantly throughout reading this week's uh, DC books. And it wasn't until I got to this story where I actually I saw how clean and crisp and how wonderful everything was drawn, and I started reading the Snickers ad. And I, as I got halfway, I got all the way through to here, and then I saw the Snickers thing, and I go, oh, that's the Snickers ad. Back to the story. So we have Superman basically tell, sending, the, the, this is his article that he's sending to Lois. We have the Super Family. We have Brain Act 5 from the future. We have the his son, who's aged up from the future, which people have an issue with. We have Connor Kent from Young Justice here. And we have Supergirl, who was evil and then has not. And nobody really talks about that. They just kind of like skirt past that. Um, I want to... I want you to look at Brainiac right there. I am, I've taken three years of art in junior high school. I think my seven-year-old, 13-year-old uh, self could draw that brainiac right there. The arm doesn't even look like it's attached to his body. <sighs> you have that. You have... This red cloud, which at times has looked so good. And since the new artist, again, I don't mean to complain about the artist, but I will because it has just taken a massive step back. Wonderful picture right there. But I bet you if another artist had it, it would look so much better. You have... I don't know who this blonde lady is. She's the evil owner of the secret owner of. Oh no, that's the Red Cloud. That's Red Cloud. I don't know who this blonde lady is. Uh, the Red Cloud is somebody who tried to kill Superman a couple times. Got a super. Uh, got some help and whatnot. Um, and here is my favorite panel out of them all. We have Supergirl saying. What are you looking at? What am I looking at? And I, it's funny that Superman is saying that because the instant I saw that, I'm looking at this and I am also wondering, what am I looking at? Oh, so horrible. This is... I will say, this right here is quite interesting. You have this essence right here. You have the super family right here. You have them flying right there. You're getting closer. Really good perspective. Here we go. They're getting closer. We're getting closer. And this is my favorite moment right here. Oh, sorry. I This is my second favorite moment right here. Connor Kent comes flying in, hits... Uh, I can't think of what his name is. Parasite. And he just says, boom. And here's why I think that is funny. Because he goes... Boom, right here. And Brian Michael Bendis goes boom with all the word bubbles. Boom. Boom. Word bubbles. <laughs> the inside turned the page, I laughed hysterically. So two mo points of laughing hysterically. We have the what am I looking at? Because I was all wondering the same thing. And boom. Kaboom! Word bubbles. Two-thirds of the story was actually good. However, the art was so horrible, I could not stand it. 
So that is my reviews for the DC books that I read on September 23rd, 2020. What are your thoughts? What do you think? Like, subscribe, give me your con comments. Uh, I'd love to hear it. I am a, a comic novice. Keep that in mind. I, again, don't know much, but I know I love you. Or I don't know much, but I am learning and I'm trying to learn. And I'm trying to join a fun community of uh, people who are have the same similar interests as me. So thank you for watching the channel. Please stay tuned for my new 52 stuff, which will be coming out because I do need to get that shot because I have not moved on to the September, October 2011 month of New 52, and because I have thoughts, massive thoughts, about the first month of New 52 in September 2011. So thank you for watching. Again, subscribe, comment, please nice comments, um, and uh, stay tuned for future videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.